afternoon and Mabuhay. Uh, the theme of uh, today's interview is recognition of the Filipino American veterans. And my uh, guest this afternoon is Colonel Ben Akohido. He is a retired U.S. Army Colonel. Uh, Colonel, maybe first you can give us a background of your personal uh, history, your, where you were born, what school you attended in Hawaii, and basically what you had done before you entered the military. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Kodani, it's be okay for me to call you Roy. And, yes, please uh, do call And me I'll Roy. respond to Ben uh, <laughs> during our discussion. Well, I, I was born here in in Kukui Street in Kalihi, uh, back in the territorial days. And then the family decided to move to Wahiwa, and since when I was four years old, and I've been living in Wahiwa since then. Uh, that's been my official home. I went to public school, said in Wahiwa, went to Lelua High School, uh, and it's the same school where Major Antonio Taguba graduated from. I'll talk about him later. I uh, attended local universities here, uh, earned degrees in business, uh, an MA in educational administration from Pepperdine. And then um, as one of my careers, I was certified as a special educator and served in the Department of Education, dealing with uh, special needs children and adults and mentoring young teachers in special education. This is in Hawaii? In Hawaii. And. Uh you were a special ed teacher, and how did you get into the military? Well, uh, the military was my first career. Um, in the 1950s, just as the outbreak of uh, the Korean War, um, I had family ish concerns and couldn't volunteer as some of my classmates did. Mm -hmm. So I joined the National Guard, uh, being 17 and a half years old at that time, and served in the National Guard. And from there, I developed a full-time career with the National Guard and with active duty. I've got 10 years of active duty and, and, and the uh, 26 years of uh, full-time service with the National Guard and Army Reserve. I see. Did you uh, go abroad at any time during your military service? Oh, yeah. Many assignments, especially in the Far East. And uh, I became a Phil uh, Far East specialist for the U.S. Army, sitting in a desk where I participated in uh, bilateral exercises with uh, Asian nations. When you say you sat at the desk, was this in Honolulu at Chapter? Yes, at, uh, or? at, at um, Fort Chaft and Camp mm -hmm. Smith and here at Fort Tibusi. I see. And then uh, did you go to uh, officer cadet school since you're a colonel now oh, or yeah. when you retired? Yeah, I, um, I, I was commissioned uh, and then attended the uh, uh, basic officer's course at um, Fort Benning, Georgia. At what stage of your life was, was that? Uh, was it after high school? Uh, it was at that stage where I was attending the uh, University of Hawaii. I see. And, uh, at that, and just before uh, completing university, I, was, um, I had the opportunity to go to uh, basic training at Fort Benning and to become an were, officer. And you became an officer? Yes. And, uh, Somewhere between your teaching career and your military career, you served abroad, if I am correct. Mostly on um, continental United States and in the Far East. Uh, I see. Uh, that's why I became a Far East specialist in, in my military career. And then uh, did you serve in any other country, or in a country other than uh, the Philippines? Um, Korea, uh, in Thailand. Um, and of course, on the continental United States. In Korea, did you uh, experience uh, uh, military uh, uh, battle uh, experience? No. Um, the Korean War ended in 1953. Yes. And service after 1953 to date is called the uh, Korean Defense Service. So mm -hmm. uh, I served uh, during uh, in, in the 60s and it's part of the Korean Defense uh, Service. All right. Now, <clears throat> Colonel, for the purpose of this afternoon's interview,
tell us who are the uh, Filipino American uh, veterans? Okay, that's a good question, and I'm glad you raised it because um, I need to give you a generic definition of Filipino veterans and also a very specific um, um, definition of Filipino veterans of World War II. So I'm going to say that uh, my remarks are all linked to the Filipino veterans, correction, Filipino American veterans of World War II. All right. Okay. And specifically, back in July of 1941, President Roosevelt activated 260 uh, Filipino troops, and Philippines was part of the, com the Commonwealth, was part of the uh, uh, United States possession. And he placed those troops, those ground, Filipino ground troops, under, in the United States Armed Forces of the Far East, under the command of uh, General Douglas MacArthur. And of course, there were American troops also in that, in that area and in that order of battle. So the term Filipino-American veterans referred to the Filipino troops and to the American troops in that particular area during World, uh, just prior to World War II. On the December 7th attack at Pearl Harbor, there was a si simultaneous attack on December 8th in Manila. So the uh, Filipino ground troops were really the first line of defense for the Philippines and America as we entered into World War II. And uh, let me just summarize here what you have said. So even prior to the attack on the Philippines on December 8th, 1941, a group of Filipino uh, military uh, was already a part of the U.S. American, uh, US -American uh, armed forces. 260,000 Filipinos, yes. Uh, that's quite a large number, that's true. Colonel. That's true. And uh, when the war broke out on December 8th, they were under the command of General MacArthur. And did they uh, uh, engage in military combat with the Japanese immediately at that time? Yes, uh, there was immediate um, engagement with the uh, Japanese Imperial forces. And most of the heavy battle was in the southern part of Luzon, particularly in the area that is famous called Bataan and Corregidor. And those battles with the uh, enemy forces lasted to April 9th, and when the Bataan oh, fell. What, what year? Of 1940, 1942. Okay. And then um, General Rainwright surrendered the rest of the, American, uh, rest of the uh, defending forces in May of that year. And so um, you can consider that phase of the uh, uh, combat operation as the defense of the Philippines. And thereafter, uh, warfare was more guerrilla operations by native Filipinos. They were not necessarily militarily no. trained. They were civilians. They were just a ragtag group of patriots and mm -hmm. defending uh, their nation. Colonel, what happened to the 260,000 uh, Filipinos that were official uh, armed forces uh, personnel? Well, over the ages now, we dwindled down to um, about 18,000 through the loss of aging and, and deaths. Mm -hmm. but. Um, the term, specific term of Filipino veterans of World War II, of Filipino American veterans of World War II, um, um, contains the surviving veterans of that time, both Americans and Filipinos. And there is a national initiative now mm -hmm. to get recognition of their sacrifice and services to the Philippines and America. And it's been seven, 70 years, over 70 years that uh, this recognition is long overdue. So um, on June 11th, Kamehameha Day, I'm proud to say that uh, Senator Hirono and Representative Gar Gabbard introduced into Congress bills to award the Congressional Gold Medal to the World War II Phil M. veterans. Okay. Let, let's uh, <clears throat> take it uh, uh, step by step here, uh, Colonel. When uh, General Wainwright uh, surrendered Corregidor, there were uh, 
Filipino uh, soldiers in, in the Philippines. That's correct. And all of them were not Filipino-American soldiers. That's correct. By definition, by my definition, yeah. the others were Americans. Americans. All right. OK, American now, troops. Let, let me ask you this. Now, when uh, the uh, President of the United States, prior to December 8, 1941, when he made the Filipino military units a part of the American units, was there any promise by the president or any promise by any uh, military officer that said, if you, now that you are part of the United States Army in the Philippines, you will have all these benefits? That promise was what came from General Douglas McCarthy himself, mm. who said that you serving with us will have full benefits, veteran benefits. Of the, of the American, of the American soldiers. Yes, same as the American soldiers. And so the, the Filipino uh, military who fought alongside the American uh, soldiers uh, presumed that they would have the same benefits as the American soldiers in the Philippines. That's a correct presumption, but I must say that the mm -hmm. Filipinos mm -hmm. fought valiantly and patriotically mm -hmm. for, for, for their homeland. Ah, oh, I their see. Homeland. Right. Okay. And then <clears throat> tied to that was that their homeland was a possession of the United States at, at that time. And presumably they all says, okay. And this is why we have this, after 70 years, this um, movement or issue of getting those uh, benefits for the veterans. The, over the years, they received partial benefits. And let me explain that. Sure. Okay. Um, the, first of all, in 1999, President Clinton mm -hmm. made a public um, apology about American colonialism in the Spanish-American uh -huh. War. I see. In, in history at that time, the Philippines were involved, the opening of Japan was in, the harbor in Japan was involved, the uh, uh, Hawaiian monarchy was involved, mm. and of course Cuba was involved. Oh, right. There was the uh, colonial period of America. Right. And President Clinton made an apology about the colonialism because the Philippines always felt that they were a sovereign nation who fought for the independence from the Spanish only to become wards of the United States of America. So that lingered with them. And in the early 1900s, we did have the Philippines Resurrection War between the mm -hmm. uh, Philippines and America. America. Yeah. By 1902, however, the issue was resolved where that the Philippine scouts of the Commonwealth of the Philippines became part of the United States Army. Mm. And the organization that I belong to, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, had its origin in fighting that battle in the early 1900s. In the Philippines. In the Philippines. And uh, the, the, uh, the, organized, the VFW is now one, just celebrated its 116th uh, anniversary, I mean, convention. And I must say at this point, mm -hmm. we are the first uh, veterans organization, the oldest and the largest, to support this initiative to get the Congressional Gold Medal for the World War II Philam veterans, okay? And uh, we have passed by resolution urging Congress to make this award of the gold medal. Um, may I add that some of the, uh, oh, I'm, I need to add this. 300 Americans of Filipino ancestry from our plantations and towns mm -hmm. were members of the 1st and 2nd Infantry Regiment. This is part of the United States the Army. Army. Yeah, and some of the famous local people involved in that was Supreme Court William Justice, right. uh, William uh, Richardson, Richardson. Right. who was a platoon leader of, of the unit. Um, uh, how, did that, how did that come about? Because here you have someone from Hawaii who's not Filipino to the best of my knowledge and still served in the Philippines. 
how did that come about? Okay, the 300 local yep. guys right. were inducted into the 1st and 2nd Infantry uh, Regiments and trained in California. And they were inserted into the campaign, as I pointed out earlier, mm -hmm. um, in late 1943. Oh, okay. in 43. 1943. Right. Okay. Um, previous to that, the, uh, I call the Secret Army, the 700 specially trained, were inserted into the Philippines to do intelligence and reconnaissance for MacArthur's headquarters and also to lead and coordinate. This is where we got this organized guerrillas mm -hmm. come into being. All right. At this time, we are going to take a short break. And if anyone has any questions to ask the Colonel, uh, please uh, tweet us. Uh, this is uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. Center Stage airs every Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And of course, you can check out our archives on YouTube or on Think Tech Hawaii anytime you like. Why should you do that? Because this is an arts show that I believe is making a difference in lives. We talk with uh, artists of various ilk. We talk with painters and, and writers, playwrights, novelists, poets, sculptors, dancers, um, you name it, directors, but, uh, actors, of course. And we don't on only talk about what people do, but we talk about how they do it. And my favorite part of the conversation, we talk about why they do it. And it's really common on this show to hear people say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And it's very common to hear people afterwards who have seen the show say the same thing. And I hear all the time that people are inspired by the conversations that we have. So why don't you join us and be inspired too. That's Center Stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. We'll see you Center Stage. Good afternoon again. My guest this afternoon is Colonel Ben Akuhito. And he is my guest this afternoon, and we are discussing the recognition of Filipino-American veterans. And, uh, Colonel, before we go on uh, uh, this afternoon, is there a official organization of Filipino-American veterans? Uh, is there such a organization as Filipino Veterans Recognition and Education, Education Project? Yes, and officially it was uh, established in June of, of last year. And the um, organization is known as the Filipino Veterans Recognition and Education Project. And the acronym for that is Filvet Rep. Mm -hmm. Filvet Rep. And it's based in Washington, D.C. Uh, we have a board of directors uh, consisting of 11 regions, and Hawaii is the 11th region. I am the regional coordinator or member of the board of directors. And the region 11 comprises of uh, Hawaii, of course, Guam, American Samoa, and Marianas. Um, because uh, you'd be surprised, uh, we have still have Filipino World War II veterans living in this wide Pacific area. Mm, I see. Including the Marianas. Including the Marianas. Uh, did you mention Guam also? Guam, yes. Uh, there, there are uh, veterans living in Guam. Yes. Uh, I'll give you an example of one who is now presently in my post, uh, veterans post, who was a ROTC student in this, on December 8th in Manila mm -hmm. and was activated uh, to, you know, to, to fight in the war. Mm -hmm. And he eventually became a member of the United States Army, and he moved to Guam and resides in Guam. And, and well, for, well, first of all, he had a Simon in Okinawa, I married see. an Okinawan lady, and they moved to Guam and have resided in Guam for a long time. Uh, he was an entrepreneur. He now has moved to Hawaii, and I'm proud to have him as a member of the first uh, 1572 Veterans Post here in Hawaii. His name is? Ernie Sombrero. And uh, uh, he is uh, part of the, the, uh, Filipino, uh, the Philippine Veterans Group? That's it. That's right. 
in his regard, he served in the Philippine forces from his ROTC status into a military active status, and then joined the United States Army. He uh, retired at what rank? Uh, as a sergeant first class. I see. What is so special about uh, a Sergeant uh, Sombrero? Well, he's an entrepreneur. And then my, by marrying an Okinawan lady, moving into, mm -hmm. um, into uh, uh, to Guam, and you know, they're very soft-spoken. And, and somehow I found out that he has a hotel in Guam. Oh. You know? mm -hmm. and he then, owns a hotel. Yeah, but yeah. He, since then he's moved to Hawaii. And then his family, <laughs> and this is a commercial plug now, <laughs> uh, brought out a microbrewery here that closed out, uh, Sam Choi's microbrewery closed out, and his son um, brews beer under the label of Aloha beer. I see, I see. So that, that's a family that's, uh, because of his um, having the opportunity entrepreneurially in America, uh, his family has, has, has uh, I profited from, from that. Colonel, uh, when I uh, read about the Filipino-American veterans, there are many local, uh, very prestigious people who have had experience in the Filipino-American uh, veterans uh, or were soldiers yeah. in the Philippines. Uh, uh, for instance, as I uh, read, there was uh, the Union le leader Tony Rania, mm -hmm. Hawaii Supreme Co Court Associate Justice Ben Manor, yes, and then there is Representative uh, Emilio Alcon, and then Peter Aduha. So, did all of these uh, people that I just mentioned served in the Philippines? They all served in the Philippines. They all served in the first or the second uh, infantry regiment. And I do want to add that uh, some of our local uh, guys right. served in the Alamo Scouts. What is that? The Alamo Scouts are the predecessors of, um, mm. of the uh, Special Forces um, uh, people in the United States Army in the Pacific area. And one of the most famous um, soldier of that particular unit serving with Colonel Afonso, a local boy, local guy, was Herbert Wolf. General Wolf, who is a, who was the Westcom was Westcom commander, the predecessor of the United States Army Pacific. So we're very proud of the fact that uh, both uh, Judge Richardson and and General Wolf participated in the World War II campaign and were and still carried on our roles as member of the uh, VFW Post 1572. Are they still active? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. they they passed on. Oh, uh, oh you know. I see. But uh, in, in honor of their service, we we have them as honorary members. Oh, uh, very good. And then um, during the break, you mentioned to me that you are active in uh, in uh, a organization which uh, do you go abroad to also uh, provide uh, public service in in these different countries that you mentioned? Um, yes, um, example for that was that you've heard of the Aloha Medical Mission. Right, I do. That has served all over uh, mm -hmm. the globe, actually. And the doctors uh, yeah. serve without compensation. That's right? true, that that's true. Yeah. Um, what is the pri connection? Pri prior to uh, Aloha Mission coming into being, uh, I had the task of taking American medical troops to different countries in the, in the Orient and did the same thing that the Aloha Mission did. I see. Except that they were military doctors. Yeah. We were, and then people would come from all over the countryside and be serviced by the American, doc, American military doctors. And uh, this is a story I really like to tell. Mm -hmm. I came back and I wanted to, I wanted to report to the doctor that uh, first established Aloha Mission and I went to his office and I said I need an appointment with the doctor I want to talk about the Aloha Mission and our connection militarily with the civilian effort and the secretary told me he's not here 
and I can't give you an appointment for a while. I says, why? <laughs> because he's in purgatory. He's doing, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's in purgatory. He's doing his penance. And I was taken aback. What, what do you mean? Well, he went back to his uh, hometown mm -hmm. to provide uh, free medical service in the Philippines. In the Philippines. Uh -huh. So that was his penance, I so see. to speak. Yeah. You know? And uh, the, he, but the, the and doctor was a civilian. Yeah. And, but he was instrumental in uh, um, uh, dri the driving force in establishing the mission to what it is today. Uh, who was that doctor? I can't think of his name right now. Not Dr. Kumara. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not Dr. Kumara. Dr. Kumara died recently. Right. right. No, not Dr. Way before that. I see. Uh, okay. His name will come back to me. All right. Eventually. All right. <laughs> now, uh, Colonel. Let us get to the heart of this afternoon's uh, interview. Uh, how many veterans, uh, Filipino-American veterans, are still surviving? We think there are about 18,000 World War II Filipino-American veterans still surviving. But the eligibility for a gold medal mm -hmm. is, will be available to the surviving spouse of those that have passed on. If the serving spouse is not around, then the medal will, they will be eligible and be given to the next of kin, usually uh, one, of the, one of the offsprings uh, of the veterans of World War II. So this is where we are now as field vet rep um, with our national organization, uh, getting Congress to approve the uh, proposed legislation and have the U.S. Mint print one gold medal uh, specially designed for the uh, uh, World War II operations, and that uh, bronze medal will be available for uh, the eligibles that I mentioned. And this is similar to what the American of Japanese ans uh, ancestries, the AJAs, did in 2010. I see. Okay, uh, I, I did, wonder. But did you say 18,000? Yeah, 18,000 all over, all over the world. Uh, I would survive me. They, they all served uh, in World War II? Yeah. And this is our biggest task in conducting a uh, census mm -hmm. in getting their names. And we have to verify the fact that through records mm -hmm. that they did serve in the Philippines during that campaign. Why? What is the hitch or what is the difficulty in getting recognition from con Congress, I, I presume? Uh, actually, there was no movement uh, until recently when General Taguba, who served as a special consultant to the AJAs and whose father was a Beltan that much SKP, mm -hmm. realized that, A, history of the World War II Phil M. Vets must not be lost, should be perpetuated, and recognition be given for their service to America and to the Philippines. And two, the second part of this project, to uh, establish the educational curriculum in the secondary schools and, and in the college mm -hmm. and higher education, so that uh, specifically, what what do you do? They want to achieve the education part, recognition of the yeah. Filipino American recognition veterans. of Filipino Americans, and to note that there was a tie in to. Um, us in America, America entering Second World War, mm -hmm. and that the Philippines were the first line of defense, giving America time to marshal its military forces mm -hmm. to continue the, uh, the war effort. Uh, let me ask you, which I, I don't, the, uh, don't know the answer, that's why I'm asking. Uh, after uh, December 8th, uh, where, where, what happened to General MacArthur? Did he? Did he stay around in the, in the Philippines, no. or did he go somewhere else? And why did General Wainwright have to surrender when you had General MacArthur? Um, General MacArthur was ordered to leave the Philippines and to establish his headquarters in Australia, mm -hmm. in which he did. And General Wainwright was given the command of the forces on, on ground to fight the enemy forces. They did valiantly from Corregidor and Bataan until they ran out of ammunition, until they ran out of food, and until they could fight no longer. Mm -hmm. 
because of the lack of resources and no resupply and no reinforcement online. And so uh, to prevent further uh, casualties mm -hmm. to the remaining troops, in the name of the United States and the Philippines, he surrendered to the Japanese forces. I see. At this time, we are taking another break. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to tweet us this afternoon. Our guest is Colonel Ben Akohido, uh, who is a United States Army veteran. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island in the ER position. Every other Tuesday, I get to host a show here on the Think Tech program about healthcare. We call it Healthcare in Hawaii. It's really enjoyable for me to bring other healthcare leaders from around the state to talk about our pressing issues. Hawaii has long been the health state, but we need to keep up the momentum, the inertia, and with your help and with your participation, we can come and share all of the big issues that are pressing day to day. Thanks for joining us every Tuesday, alternating weeks from 2 to 2.45. Last question. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen. I'm the host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about why people should like science, why science is actually fun, how science is a dynamic and vital part of everyone's life, why everyone, every man, woman, and child on the planet should really know science, should love science, should be familiar with science. So it's a great show. People come on here and have interesting conversations with us. They tell us why they do what they do, why they love it, why we should love it, too. I hope you'll join us every Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. And, of course, you can see it anytime on YouTube. Aloha. Good afternoon, and uh, my guest this afternoon is Colonel Ben Akuhido. He is uh, very active in the recognition of Filipino-American veterans. Now, uh, Colonel, before we go on, I, I would like to ask you, by getting uh, the recognition that the Filipino-American veterans are seeking, uh, are there other benefits, such as to the survivors, medical benefits, pension benefits, uh, to their family uh, members, like the widow or children? What, what other benefits will be derived? Well, first I'd like to speak about the um, widows. On August 8th, we had a meeting with the guerrillas and uh, the scouts and their spouses here at um, the Oahu Veterans Center. And this was hosted by Senator Hirano, Representative Gar Gabbard, and General, um, General Taguba. And there arose the issue about benefits for widows. Mm -hmm. And we had several widows in the audience. And subsequent to that meeting, I had calls about from widows as to the benefits they did not receive after the death of their veterans or to which they were entitled. Why, why is that? And it's because of, I'm mean, going to point very blankly, uh, very pointedly, it was ignorance. The assumption was made that the benefits were automatic. Oh. They are not. Mm. It has to be applied for. Mm -hmm. And even after this late date, uh, after having this issue service, we are going to try to help uh, the widows who should have what they call DIC, uh, which is the disability indentive uh, compensation, uh, try to get them to apply for their benefits. Okay. Um, the other... Um, but to wait 70 years, 70 Colonel, years, that's a yeah, long that's time. That's a long time, really. Yeah. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I, really, I really don't know and I, why this has happened. And I don't want to speak about this uh, openly until I can find more facts, to, uh, more facts. But this seemed to be at that time, an undertone of racial discrimination. Against the Filipinos? Yes. When they were day laborers and migrant workers in California, uh, mm -hmm. they suffered racial discrimination. So mm -hmm. that's a tremendous amount of racial discrimination. And again, this is only an opinion on my part. Mm -hmm. I need to do more research mm -hmm. uh, uh, to establish the facts. But 
in my opinion, there was an underlying um, mm. uh, racial bias to, to what has happened. Now, um, there were seven segregated units in World War II. Six of the units got the Congressional Gold Medal. Mm -hmm. um, it was the uh, Tuskegee Airmen, the right. Afro-Americans. Uh, it was the uh, American Indians twice, two, mm -hmm. two major tribes. Um, the women uh, air service pilots, the WASP, got it. And interestingly, one of the other group was the Medford Marines, Afro-Americans, oh. oh. Medford Point Marines, who never served in combat. Oh, but yeah. they were in a training, segregated uh, training camp right next to the major training camp of the Marines, Camp Lejeune, and the black Marines couldn't go on base unless they were escorted by one white Marine. Mm. So this is the racial undertones in, in some of it at that time mm -hmm. that happened. But they were, uh, they gained, they were disaggregated, mm. and so they were recognized for their efforts and with the Congressional Gold Medal. Of course, in 2010, the uh, 100th Battalion, the 442 Regiment, the Military Specialist, and an Engineering Battalion, many of them from the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. 442, largely from boys or guys that came from internment camps on the mm -hmm. mainland, got the gold medal. Most recently, in June of um, 1945, the Puerto Rican National Guard oh. 65th Regiment got it. Okay, So the 7th unit, being the World War II Filipino Philam vets have never gotten it, and this is why we have a movement now. Mm -hmm. And we think we can get it because um, other units recently have gotten uh, the gold medal. And I give you that recent um, um, example. The Canadian battalion got the gold medal because they served with the American battalion in what was called the, uh, the Devil's Brigade. This is where? Yeah. This is in in the United States of America, in the United States. Where did they serve? Oh, they serve in Europe. I see. They serve in Europe, and they did many many rescues there in I see. in Europe uh, from prison camps. Why so, why would we recognize the Canadians? Because they contributed to the American effort uh, in concluding the war. I see. And so you know the America and the Filipinos contributed right. to the war effort right. for America. In fact, again, a personal opinion is that. At that time, America was an, an isolationist nation, thinking mm -hmm. that the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean would protect our shores from foreign uh, inclusions, okay? In fact, England in the late 30s was trying to get America to join them in fighting uh, the Nazis in, right. in Europe. We says no. Mm -hmm. But when December 7th occurred, right. Franklin Delano Roosevelt in his famous declaration said, this is the day of infamy. Right. Okay? And so America got into the war effort, became a world power and a world leader to this day. And mm -hmm. um, uh, Admiral Yamamoto of the Imperial Fleet that attacked Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. said, was against the attack mm -hmm. and said that we would well now awaken the American giant. Mm -hmm. But he was a military man. He, he carried out his orders, and he led the attack on Pearl Harbor. I see. Let me ask you, what about, we talk, you talked about the, the widows. What about the children of uh, these uh, Filipino-American veterans? The only... Uh, Would they get any benefit well, by this no recognition? Benefits, no benefits other than uh, getting recognition for their uh, ancestors' contribution and the gold, me uh, the gold medal replica. What about the immigration uh, benefits? Well, this is a separate issue where um, uh, our delegation has been working, in Inouye, Akaka, and all of our previous congressional people have been working for years to lower the, uh, the visa quota for the Filipinos. In fact, uh, there have been uh, remunerations of the Family Reunification Act Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and there's a bill in Congress right now, but as I understand it, President uh, Obama mm -hmm. is trying to uh, mitigate this issue through the immigration services mm -hmm. by, um, uh, I guess, uh, tampering the requirements. I see, by yeah. executive order. By executive, yeah. Not by Congress. Not by congressional, congressional action. action. Although it, it is a political issue, issue at I this see, time. I see, I see. 
uh, well, as we all know, immigration is such a hot button issue that yes. it's uh, very difficult to yeah. uh, uh, enact or implement. Now, uh, Colonel, how can the public help the Filipino American veterans to get the recognition that the other uh, groups have received? Well, the, there's several ways of doing this. Mm -hmm. One, of course, is to contact your friends in the main and other places and have them contact their congressional officials to support um, <clears throat> House Resolution uh, 2737 and Senate Bill 1555, the award of the gold medal to the Filipino veterans. Contact them and ask them to so ask their congressional people to. Now we should also, excuse me, <clears throat> we should also ask our local <laughs> and our state official to exert their influence to get this gold medal uh, awarded. Th these are uh, the, uh, like the governors and the, the governors and the mayors, yes, and the legislatures. And the legislatures and the influential people in the community <coughs> to lend their support yeah. to Filipino-American <clears throat> veterans. Yeah. And, and, and you who have had contact with these veterans, <coughs> we should know their stories. We should, <coughs> excuse me, Keep it in our historical legacy and uh, <coughs> tell them of the significance of their sacrifices. You know, the sacrifice of the World War II Phil M. veterans have opened lines of opportunities for the following generations. Mm -hmm. Immediately after uh, World War II, we have distinguished um, Filipino Americans in uh, different professions and especially in the military service. Mm -hmm. uh, General Tanguba is a, a perfect example of that. Second and third generations uh, having opportunity in America, the land of opportunity. Right. Colonel, uh, we have run out of time this afternoon. Um, and uh, uh, prior to our taking a break, you mentioned about uh, the younger uh, Filipinos in Hawaii or in America who uh, should participate more active, actively. Would, oh, you, would you like to say yes, a few words yes, before we yes. go offline? Yeah. The 100th Battalion, the 442 Regiment, they have second and third uh, generations of their descendants uh, running uh, associations to perpetuate their history. We are striving to get the younger Filipinos uh, who have ties, or even those that are proud of the fact of the contributions made by these World War II veterans, to perpetuate their history through education, through associations, and through community service in the name, and, and really not in the name, but in, in, in line with the service done by these great uh, ancestors of ours. Colonel, you know, it, I, my personal belief also is that you don't have to be a young uh, Filipino necessarily to support the Filipino-American veterans uh, because of our interracial community in no, Hawaii no, no, no. Uh, where, you know, you have so many interracial yeah. marriages. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, other cultures, races, creeds, whatever. Thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for making that point. It's open to our multiracial ethnic uh, society that we have in Hawaii. And uh, yes, everyone, please, sure. you know, recognize the efforts of those patriotic veterans who gave us and contributed to the land of the free. Right. Colonel, it was a real pleasure for me. I learned a lot from you this afternoon. I wish we had more time. Uh, maybe you can come back again sometime in the future. Let us hope that the next time uh, you have made great inroads to the recognition of the Filipino-American veterans. And uh, thank you very much again for appearing this afternoon. Mahalo, <laughs> Mr. Kodani. Uh, Roy. Oh, Roy. <laughs> Mahalo. Thank you. Thank and you very much. Tagan salamat in my dialect. Thank you very much.